everybody, we've come out to do a little bit of moto camping and I'm gonna do things a little bit different this time. Because in the past, I've been going out into the wilderness and just kind of recreation camping off of a motorcycle. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm gonna try to do things a little bit different, you know, moving forward. And that was part of the plan when I considered buying this bike and the luggage set up and everything like that. I had to rethink my ideas and thoughts about camping a little bit. I had to kind of decide between, you know, am I recreation camping or am I camping because I need a place to stop and spend the night because I'm in route somewhere else and I need a rest. So I'm, I'm gonna start trying to camp like I need the rest and I'm stopping for the night as opposed to just going out recreation camping and having all the goodies and things like that. There's a nice fire pit right here and I'm not even gonna build a fire. So I've brought no fire making equipment, anything like that. Um, like I said, we'll go through the bag as I pull everything out and we'll talk about it. Now the ground's a little bit uneven and I was originally thinking, well, I'll just find a rock or something to put under the kickstand. But then I was like, oh yeah, I got a center stand. I don't have to worry about that. So yeah, the bike's, bike's stable. So adding that center stand, like I said, it's just done nothing but come in handy. And we don't need much out of the side bags because this one's all, all tools and wet weather gear maintenance things for the bike is all in this one so we don't even need to get in that one at all that one we're going to get a few items out of that one but not a whole lot all right so we have access to the bag first things on top is i'm going to take this strap out this is the shoulder strap for the duffel if i needed to carry it anywhere off the bike i'm just going to put that out of the way for now um, and just so this don't fall out got some uh we want to call that critter uh, critter repellent two and four legged variety. First thing up, uh, Helinox chair. Um, I will not go camping without this. This is mandatory. This goes in the bag. This thing has been. I can't even say how nice it has been to have this thing. Like I said I could sit on one of those stumps or something like that, but my old ass, I like to have a nice comfy chair with me, and this really fits the bill. They're a little pricey. You can find less expensive ones, um, but I'm, I'm kind of glad I just, you know, bought the bullet and actually this is my table. This was the luxury item I was talking about. Like I said, I haven't decided if this item is going to be on the, the list all the time because I'm not always going to have access to a picnic table and this has just been really extremely handy to have. Not a necessity, but we'll see. It's, it does take up some space in the bag, but it might be worth it in the long run. Because like I said, not all camping sites are gonna have picnic tables. This is one of them. So I've got no picnic table. This is my table. And hopefully the bike's not blocking this out. There it is, camp table with two drink holders in it. So I get my drink out of the bag. That's where that goes. All right, what's next? Coffee cup, gotta have it. insect repellent put that with the critter repellent for now here's the chair I said this one's mandatory the table maybe not this one gotta have it and I have optional feet for this but I eliminated them from my packing list because they add a lot of bulk to the package. So to get it to pack smaller, I've eliminated the large feet for the for these, so I just have the small feet on it now. And the large feet just kind of keep it from sinking into soft dirt. So if the ground's a little bit soft, the large feet are handy. Um, 
not not mandatory. There's my chair. Actually, this is exactly where I said I was gonna set the tent up at, so I'm gonna move this stuff. Next up, flashlight. This is my Olight Baton 3 flashlight with the recharging case. The recharging case will charge the flashlight up somewhere between three and four times. Nice. Tent poles. All right, this bag is part of the necessities. The bag itself. Inside this bag is a puffy jacket and my sleeping mat. But the bag itself turns into a pillow when I turn it inside out and put my puffy jacket inside here or any extra clothes that I have. It, it fills this bag and there's a, a felt side to this bag and you just use the bag itself as a pillow so I don't have to pack an extra pillow. So this thing's serving multi-duty. Canteen cup and stove, solar light lantern. And this is a cheap skate thing. I might have paid 10 bucks for this off eBay a decade ago, and it still works, so I'm, I just keep using it. It's got uh, solar panels on it, so I just set it out, solar panels up during the day. It gives me a little bit of light at night to light up the campground, so I'm not constantly out here with a flashlight. Uh, canteen cup, standard. Uh, this is, I don't even know who makes this. Maybe Snow Peak. Um, I've had this for... 10 years plus. And I've also got a propane stove inside here. I was using my Coleman multi-fuel stove, but I'm trying to keep everything packaged small. So MSR pocket rocket stove in here with a fuel canister also. And that's mainly for making coffee, things like that in the morning. This is the tent. This is a Big Agnes, I want to say Copper Spur, one man tent. And that's, uh, I'm just using like old backpack equipment that I've had for a long time. I didn't buy this specifically for moto camping or anything like that, but it is a small packable tent and it works well, I like it. I'm not looking to change this out or anything like that. Sleeping bag, this is also something I've just had. Um, I do want to buy another one. Uh, I want one that packs a little smaller. This is fairly inexpensive Marmot Aspen 40. It's okay, it's nothing, nothing spectacular here. And that's it for the duffel bag, except for a stray tent peg that I threw in there because I found it and it goes with that stuff. All right, you see a water bottle sticking out of the back of the bag here. This is just a smart water bottle. And we'll go over why I'm carrying this in. If I need to buy water or anything like that, when I stop for gas at a convenience store, I can just buy another one of these if I need, a, if I need another one. Spare set of shoes. These are some Hey Dudes, some old ones that I've worn out. I want to let my feet air out around camp. Nice little shoes to slip into. This is all toiletries, first aid kit, hygiene kit. Uh, my coffee packets are in here, condiments, things like that are in this bag. Next up, this is a water purification kit, and this goes with that smart water bottle. You'll see it in action here in a little bit. So I can get water at the campsite. Uh, I'm not always going to have access to potable water, but there is, there's usually, you know, creeks and streams and things like that around. I can get water out of that, filter it, 
bottle it up in that smart water bottle. That's what that's for. Military poncho. This is, I debated on whether I should bring this or not. And the reason I did, the reason I included it is because like I said, this is, I'm packing for travel. So if it starts pouring down rain or anything like that, there are some bungee cords wrapped up inside this. I can string this up and make a shelter, you know, just a quick makeshift shelter just to get myself and my gear out of the rain if I have to. And if I need to set up the tent, I can set the tent up underneath this. And like when I was in the military, I slept under this all the time. I didn't have a tent. But I tend not to do that when I'm camping a lot because of all of the critters. We have a ton of ticks around here and I don't like ticks. So yeah, I want my mesh tent. But this is a little backup item. Um, we got a change of clothes and a towel. That's all that's left. We'll leave those items in here. We'll stick that back in there for now. Let's get this tent set up. Now, Joe Boo, I don't want you to freak out, but you have got a spider on your head. You owe me. You owe me big time. All right, let's go get some water. So, water filtration kit. All we have is a water bag and my spoon that I need to clean now. This is maintenance item for the filter. If I need to flush the filter out, that's what that is. Let's put that back in here for now. So we need to go down to the water and fill this bag up. All right, so this is a two liter water bag. And this piece comes off. Just open it up and get us some water. There we go. So now that just folds over like that. And this goes back on keep it from coming open. Now we've got two liters of water. So ideally I'd like to find like a tree limb or something to hang this bag from but I'm just going to use the bike because none of them seem to be exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm just going to wrap this little tie down around the handlebar of the bike. Let the weight hold it. And there's our water bag. Now to start making water. This might touch the ground, that might be too low. We'll see. This is a Sawyer Squeeze water filter and I've just added a child's toy off of eBay. You buy these to put two two liter bottles together and make a little tornado toy out of it. Uh, but it also fits right on that and also screws into a smart water bottle. So we need to get water. So flip this upside down and do the cap screw this onto the bag and you can see the water dripping through the filter and once that bottle's filled up we'll have clean water Well, I took a moment to change out of my riding clothes into my spare clothes and our water bottle is full so we've removed it from the bag and now we've got to take the filter off and there will be some leakage there but we have us a clean bottle of water. Well, all right it's time for some dinner. Like I said we just bought a sub at the store on the way out here so I think I think it's probably going to be better traveling if I eat this way and maybe you know have a good lunch or dinner at a restaurant or something before coming to camp instead of trying to pack all this stuff and pack all the 
cooking equipment and things like that. I just think this might be the better way to go. So we're going to try it out. See if it's any good or not. Yummy! All right, I gotta go renegade handheld here with no mics or anything like that because I have put everything away and sealed up the tent. I guess I need to get my flashlight here because rain is coming. I had a few sprinkles, clouds are getting dark. It wasn't calling for rain, but here it comes. So I've set up the poncho hooch. So I'm glad I brought that. That's just four bungee cords, one on each corner. I'd like a fifth branch or something hanging low that I can attach the hood to, but I don't get that this trip. So I'll wait out the rain under my, my tarp. I said, I wasn't, I kind of thought of this at the last minute and now I'm glad I packed this setup. So let's wait out the weather. But it is now a little bit after 8 p.m. We've got a little bit of daylight left. Well, it is getting good and dark now, and the rain has just about stopped. Still getting a few drops here and there. But I'm going to go ahead and crawl into the tent and join Joe Boo, and I am going to go to sleep. So, take one last pan around. Yeah, the clouds are about to move out. Still getting a light, light sprinkle. That's about it. But hopefully I sleep good and I will catch you guys in the morning. Well, good morning, everybody. It is three o'clock in the morning, and it is as dark as three feet up a cat's ass out here. The uh, clouds have gone away. Camera don't have the good enough sensors to pick up the stars. But me and Joe Boo are up and at him. He always gets grumpy whenever he comes camping because he says it gives him a bad case of bedhead. Messes with his hair. Got us some water boiling over here so we can make some coffee. And we'll wait for the sun to come up. See what we got. Bike got good and drenched. So we'll get everything wiped down once the sun comes up. Well, I just got a good chuckle. Because looking east, that's the direction the sun's going to come up in. And I could see light over the tops of the trees, you know, like the sun's coming up. I was like, oh, wow, it's, you know, 4.30 in the morning. It's pretty early for the sun to be coming up. I, I was, it kind of messed with my head a little bit. But I'm on the backside of the mountains. The mountain range is to my west. So I thought, well, maybe the sun, I can see the sun coming up earlier because the mountain's not blocking it from where I normally see it because I live on the other side of the mountain range. But now that I can see what's going on, it's actually the moon. <laughs> the moon was rising over the trees, so it's not the sun. I was fully expecting it to be the sun, and when it came up and I could actually see, you know, the object, I was like, well, God damn. <laughs> so the sun's still not up yet. <laughs> It'll be a while. Actually, probably another hour. 
about 5.30 I should see this thing. The sun is coming up finally. And I have started breaking down camp. And I'm trying to dry everything out because, like I said, this is a simulated travel trip, not me just packing up to go home. So I need everything good and dry by the time I pack it up. So I don't want anything wet inside the bags getting hot in the sunlight, contaminating the inside of my bags. So I've got the tarp hanging up over there and just use the bungee cords to make like a clothesline. I've got this sitting on this concrete pad so I can let that rain fly dry out before I pack that up. And over here I strung up another clothesline using the other two bungee cords. And I've got the ground sheet from the tent drying there. I said, I've got a couple of towels so I can wipe the bike down, do all that. And I'm letting this dry before I put away the air mattress because I need someplace clean to set it so I can roll it up. I don't want to do it here because I don't want to put any holes in it or anything. So it's just hanging over there, waiting, waiting on this to dry out once the sun hits it. Once it comes up really good, uh, my shoes, I'm gonna have to let the soles dry out so I can knock the mud off those before I pack them away. It's so like I said, this is a, a simulation of what I can expect on the road. So I'm making sure I get this part done properly you know, before I head out. And I'm glad it rained. Uh, it wasn't in the forecast, but it happened, and I'm glad it did happen, because I had to deal with it, and you know, now I'm having to deal with some of the aftermath of it. So that's just experience in the bag. Put it that way. Got plenty of experience camping in the rain and things like that, but not traveling on a motorcycle with rain-soaked gear. So see how long it takes to dry everything out. Then we'll get everything packed away and get on the road in this video. It's now 7.30 and the sun is hitting the tops of the trees. It hasn't quite reached the ground yet. That's when all the major drying will take place once, once the sun hits the ground level. That's what I'm waiting for. All right, we've got everything broken down, ready to roll, dried, ready to hit it. Joe Boo got his hair done, he's happy now. Uh, a total drying time was about an hour and 45 minutes. That's drying time plus packing. So I figure it's gonna take two hours after sunrise for me to leave a campsite properly. So I gotta start, I gotta factor that into my travel time, wherever I go. So hopefully this was entertaining and We'll do it again. Like I said, I want to hit, start hitting you know, more campgrounds and things. Can't think of anything else to say. Take care and I'll catch you next time, I guess. <laughs> Bye.